Step into the latest installment of our rebroadcast series, podcast number 73 titled, Stay Informed About Significant Solar Disturbances featuring Mike from COT Rebroadcast on the End Generation Project. Originally aired on May 17, 2024, exclusively on counciloftime.com. Please see link in description. This episode goes into Bible study highlighting eschatology amidst today's challenges. Join Michael from Council of Time as we explore these peculiar circumstances in this riveting episode. To understand more, visit the Council of Time on their only official website linked in description. We're dedicated to providing truth, hope, and support to those struggling with addiction who simultaneously is seeking God's guidance. Your support drives our mission to guide individuals toward truth, sobriety, and preparedness for what is described in Scripture as perilous times. Join our exclusive Locals community for EGP family members and have early access to many cool things. Thank you for being a vital part of the success of the End Generation Project. Before immersing ourselves in today's rebroadcast podcast, episode 73 titled, Stay Informed About Significant Solar Disturbances, we wanted to take a moment to tell you about our new merchandise since we are not sponsored. We also actively donate monthly to Council of Time. We're also thrilled to announce our brand new line of custom-made clothing and merchandise, all designed by our talented in-house artist and photographer, Mr. Eddie, from stylish tees to cozy hoodies and fabulous accessories. Each piece is crafted with passion and creativity. But here's the best part. Every purchase goes towards supporting our project, Whether you're a local looking to show your ongoing support with a monthly subscription or prefer a one-time donation through Ko-Fi, your contribution makes a real difference. Join us in making an impact while looking fabulous shop now and be a part of something meaningful. We appreciate your patience and understanding during this hiatus and we're grateful for your continued support. Stay tuned for more exciting content coming your way. And thank you for being part of our community. Blessings to all. Good evening, everybody out there. Good evening, good evening. All right. We'll get uh, started, shall we? All right. Yes, we have another monster about to blindside us. You guys know about that, about this uh, new region of sunspots. There's some pretty big big discharges uh, in there also. There, don't be alarmed by this, but there are some power grid issues that are highly anticipated. Just so you know. Just so you know. Just so you know. Uh, hopefully you guys don't get nervous behind these things. Uh, we live in a time where, you know, everything has been pointing toward the era we now occupy, right? Don't lose your momentum yet. Not yet. In fact, as these troubles increase, you increase. It is, in fact, your opportunity. You know, some people don't know this, but in a time of peace, in a time where everything was okay, did you guys take notice as to what was happening in the Christian community? Let me share this with you, just to spark your memory just a bit. When nothing is happening, and when everything seems to be, you know, flatlined, right? And the world is enjoying itself. You are the ones who have a special word within you that no one wants to hear. They don't. Now, they will hear, the, the people out there, they will hear messages of prosperity, messages of increase, you know, things like that. Or they want to hear messages of the good that God will do for them. But you have a different message in you. And what you're going to notice is during during these times when the world is okay, where they're doing their thing, right? You have a lot of Christians who are content in those times. But you are not. Did you notice? You are not content. You are out of place. Many of you, it seemed like you were dormant, had no place at all. All right? Isn't this something? Somebody says, Mike, is this your real voice? Yes. It is. Well, I have the bass turned all the way down. 
Is that okay? I have to turn the bass all the way down. On the phone, too. I have to turn the bass all the way down, because if not, it just... That's what it sounds like. We don't want that, right? Anyway, now that these things are happening, here's what you're going to see. All these folks who were, and they're not... Don't look at them as though something was wrong with them. But all these... People who were talking about the good that was coming. They were talking about, you know, all the good things in Christ that will come to a person. They're going to run out of things to say. The people of those congregations are going to be upset and confused. They will be. But also during this time, you guys have been slowly but surely educated in all these mishaps that are beginning to happen. In fact, right now I'm sure that some of you are full of anxieties, but not because of what's coming, because of what's inside you, because you knew these things would unfold, because these times are not strange to you, right? And so every time something happens, you're not, uh, you're not moved like everybody else. For, by and large, the world is still in denial. They are. It just so happens we are in the year, a year of demonstration. With demonstration comes consequences. With consequences comes a brokenness of the world. They'll have no answer. That answer's in you. All this time that you guys have been trying to get facts together, look up prophecies, really know certain aspects of the word, know what you're about to face, all the warnings you've been attempting to give people that a storm was coming. Not like a rainstorm or anything, but a storm of trouble was coming for the entire earth, that bad things were on the way, right? Nobody would hear you in a time of plenty. Nobody would hear you when the sun was shining and there was no real threat. Nobody would hear you for that, right? All that's going to change. This is why you have to make yourselves ready. When these calamities continue, when they don't slow down, when they get worse, people are going to remember you. You all, all of you, who attempted to give a warning, who attempted to tell people, hey, get yourselves ready so you're not caught off guard. All of you, they're going to come find you. They're going to believe that somehow you have an answer to what's happening. And you have to be ready for that. You can't give them just any answer. They're not coming to you whole. They're going to come to you broken. Absolutely vulnerable. There'll be hardly any answers. What will soon take place? Because as these things continue, it's going to make people nervous. Right? People are about to have issues with power grids. When that happens, some are going to remember the conversations. They heard from you guys or online about power grids going down. It's going to remind them of the last days. When the fires begin with the grid problems and the ocean problems, you're going to be reminded. The strange people talked about these things at length. When the spiritual manifestations begin to take over human activities in the earth, People will hunt you down to find you and ask you, what is this? How can I protect myself or my family? Because they have no answer. When people's prayers, their routine prayers, are not working because they got used to the routine and they have forgotten about the living God, they find themselves powerless. They're going to need some guidance and truth. Imagine this. Imagine someone in the earth that says the most powerful prayer. And it becomes powerless. And indeed, the most powerful prayer in the earth becomes the Lord's prayer. Now, that's what you call a flip, correct? When people find that the Lord's prayer holds real power. And that these other prayers have a few flaws in their formula. People are going to be confused at that. 
And then the word tells us there will come, there will come to this earth a famine of the word in the land. Do you know what that means? This is what you really have to get ready for. Something I'm going to talk about tonight. If there's a famine of the word in the land, if the word can hardly be found, then all of you who are sincere about the word of God, what happens to you? Uh oh. This flies in the face of all preparations. I tell you right now, when the Lord said, there's going to be confusion of faces, he meant it. He meant it. In other words, in these end times, no one wins. Only the redeemed, only the redeemed will be first embraced, delivered, transitioned. Nobody else is winning. Nobody else is winning. In fact, take that word winner and throw it out the window. That man-made word. Because that does not cover, that does not explain what the Lord's about to do. When the famine of the word is in the earth, you better believe very dark doctrines will be in the earth and they will rule. That will be under the dome of the kingdom of the beast. With the beast. Which, by the way, is only going to be for a short while. And then that entire kingdom is going to be thrust into darkness and pain and misery and sorrow. But there's going to come a famine of the word of God in the earth. Imagine that. That means all of you who are sincere about the word of God, somehow you're not able to speak to people. Somehow. Somehow. The word that you have in you, people can't find. Uh Uh-oh. Do you guys remember in the New Testament when Jesus said to those, to the the, uh, people who had been informed of some things, Jesus said, who warned you to flee? I'm going to paraphrase from this terrible time, from the damnation coming for you. Who warned you to flee? In other words, Jesus gave them no information. Why? Because they refused him. They rejected him. They refused to live by his word. And God was quite clear, wasn't he? Especially if you go back to Judges. What does God say? He says, let those gods that you were worshiping and those people that helped you and those things you look to during your time of plenty, let them deliver you out of trouble. I will not hear you. That's what God said. I'm not going to hear you. Uh huh. You've been living all this time and you've been self-delivering yourself. You have been dependent upon systems in the earth. You did not call upon my name. You didn't wait for me. You came up with everything that you come up with not to utilize me, not to trust me, not to build a relationship with me. So when calamity comes, then let those things you have been living by save you from the trouble that will come to you. Oh, boy. And do you know how many people right now they're not waiting on the Lord. They don't have to. They don't have to. They they deliver themselves. They steal, cheat, do whatever they need to do to deliver themselves. They will not wait upon the Lord. See, now, why does that make sense? Why would God want a person not to be delivered by themselves? Why would God not want you to deliver yourself? Why would God not want you to utilize, utilize the world for you to call upon the world to deliver you from things? Why? Anybody know why? See, God is not, listen, what he, the instructions he gives us is a bit more sound than what people give it credit for. I heard a guy say one time, he said, well, why wouldn't the Lord want us to use everything of the world to live a good life? By the way, the person was cursing during the, you know, they saw no problem cursing, saw no problem, right? Cursing a few lines here and there. Quoting scripture and cursing again with a beer in his hand. Saw no problem with that. That was the problem. That's the entire problem. You see what happens when when the world helps you out. When you call upon the world. They help you out in a certain way. You become loyal to the world. And indeed the world enters into you. It's almost like the world possesses people. That's why they curse and can drink. And it's true. And we all know this. All of us. we, We all know this. We all know this. Who's, who has been in here who has never said a curse word? 
Anybody here who has never cursed? Let's just go ahead and take the curtain down. Anybody here who has never in their life cursed? Anybody? Huh? Anybody? Anybody? No? Nobody? You know what the truth is? God set us on this earth. And we indeed did depend upon these things in the earth until we began to develop a relationship with the Most High. We learn who the Lord is. We stop those things. Why? Because the more, here it is, the more of the word we get in us that we believe, the more truth that's in us. As truth builds in us, not just any truth, but God's truth. As that truth builds in us, something marvelous happens. You want to know what that is? Conviction. Do you hear me? Conviction. See, you're, you were still doing your thing, cursing and doing everything else, but the more of the truth you believed, the more conviction fell upon you. It entered into your heart and you said, I, I can't keep doing this. Nobody came to you and stopped you from doing what you were doing. No one stopped you from cursing. Conviction fell upon you. You know where that conviction came from? That's the Holy Spirit. See, as you believe more and more, as you believe more and more, the spirit man in you grows. You know the spirit man does not live by anything in this earth. It lives by the word of God. Do you know that? Your spirit man, the, the person inside of you, that is a 100% spirit, lives by the word of God. It does not live by anything else in the world. Your carnal self, right? The first person you ever were is not the person you're going to be when the Lord comes. The person you're going to be when the Lord comes is that spirit man who was a baby who started growing and growing and growing until it rules over everything of you. That spirit man in you is going to be fully delivered. Nothing else will. Can you see that? Your flesh is not going to be delivered. It's not. Do you guys know that? Your spirit man, your essence, who you really are. Not your flaws and mishaps. No. Your true desires of the spirit. Your true nature of the spirit. What you truly aspire to. Some of you, you get irritated and aggravated, right? And then after you get irritated and aggravated, you say, Lord, forgive me. I get irritated and aggravated. That's not me. I don't want to be that person. Do you not know that when the Lord comes, you're going to be delivered from all of that? You will no longer struggle with anything in the flesh. Do you have any idea what type of freedom and liberty that will be? And do you not know that the more the word you believe, the more you can have that right now? Yep, I said right now. One time I thought it was impossible. I did. I thought it was impossible for a person to attain a certain position with the Lord just by themselves. You know, not to prove anything to anybody else. I thought it almost impossible. I even settled it in my own mind. I'm going to have to deal with a, with a type of irritation, with a type of, of, of limitation on this earth until I can be fully delivered by the Lord. I thought, you know, I can't overcome this stuff. You know how you feel? Uh, you, you're just not, you're not excited some days. You're not alive some days, right? You, you just don't feel that way. I thought that I would have to deal with that for a long time. The Lord absolutely proved me wrong. See, he, he put, just like he'll do you, he put me in certain positions in which I had to stand up by the Spirit when that happened. Well, can you imagine a, a person who, when I was young, I was afraid of everything. Do you know that? I was. I had a fear and a caution about everything. And it all went away one day. Simply, simply by the Lord showing me what things actually were. To learn the truth is to get rid of fear. Not any truth, but God's truth is, learn, is, is to get rid of fear. Fear cannot operate where truth is. It, it just simply can't. When the Lord showed me, what the world actually was. In other words, the, the spirit and the flesh, the differences between the two and what men were after with all this stuff they made. And this was by the word of God. And when he showed me that, he gave me a clear picture of something that I have a choice. I really do. 
I have a choice to feed myself the word of God or to continue to feed myself the garbage of the world. And whatever you eat, you become. And Lord knows I was eating a lot of the world. Now, I still believed in the living God and everything about him. I did. It's just my choices were poor. As I grew spiritually and wanted more and more of him, the world was put to the test and it failed. Then I look back on my life. Listen, everything the world promised never took place and everything it threatened never happened. How can that be? In some way, form, or fashion, it was altered. And the only thing that ever was the true outcome was what the Lord said I would have, not what men said I would have. See, I even went into that category. I used to hear people talk about the Lord, and I would hear proclamations and declarations of which it, it just didn't happen that way. But when I read the word of God, specifically the words of Christ, everything Jesus said began to come to pass. Then I found out, wait a minute, this is all based on me. This is based on me. This is based on my acceptance of his word. It's that simple. It's based on your acceptance of his word. There is no one enforcing rules. None. But there are enforcers. For example, if you choose holiness over unrighteousness, right? And it was an actual choice. And you had to choose the right way. Now listen to me closely. Because everybody wants to choose holiness when they're facing nothing. Right? That's fine and dandy. But God tries all things. And all things must be tried to see if it is real or not with him. That means only when you're given a choice between darkness and light, between good and evil, between the right thing and the wrong thing, is it really going to count? Everything else is training. Until you're tried, what you choose is not proven. Do you guys hear me? Until you're tried, it's not proven. For example, let me give you a small example. Suppose you get yourself in a situation. And in that situation, you have a choice to do it the Lord's way, which is to eat crow, right? To accept that the, the consequences of whatever you did, but the Lord will deliver you or, or you can slick willy yourself out of it. Nobody will know about it. The problem goes away. And the only person that's going to know the truth about that situation is you. Now, in that moment, you can choose between holiness or unholiness. If you choose holiness, if you choose to forego some things in your life for the sake of holiness, now you're choosing holiness. Because then at that moment it counts. It, it doesn't count until it costs you something. Do you guys hear me? It's not going to count until it costs you something. That's when you know you're tried. That's when you know your father is, is, is engaged with you. And when you choose holiness, well, that's when you find out that the word of God is a living word. Right? When you choose that holy path and you say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to do it your way. I'm going to forego. Forget about ego. Forget about reputation. Forget about pride. I want to do it your way, Lord, because I trust you. I love you. I know it's going to cost me dearly, but I assume all responsibility and I desire to do it your way. When you do that and step your foot in that direction, let me tell you something. It seems like you have to give up everything when you do that. But need I remind you, God will ask for everything, but he requires nothing. You know what happened to Abraham? What happened to Abraham? Somebody tell me what happened to Abraham. Did anybody ever have to give up anything for the living God? But he did ask for everything, didn't he? Sacrifice your only son. Back in the day, that was back in the day, right? Before Christ. But what did he do? He sent an angel to stop. He said, hey, don't you go through with it. I just wanted to see if you were going to do it. 
And what did the Lord say? Now I know I can trust you because you were about to give it all up for me. Now I know I can trust you. See, that's very important. Because when the trial comes, that's when your choice comes. And that choice is what everything in your life had worked up to at that point. And when you choose holiness over everything else, that's when the Lord does what you never expected. See, an angel came out from nowhere. Listen, an angel came out from nowhere and halted. Halted him from from killing his son, sacrificing his son on the altar. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, that's awesome. But uh, an angel came out of nowhere and said, no, no. Can you imagine that? He probably saw that. That was more than perception. That was an absolute manifestation of the living God's declaration in somebody's life. As you adopt more and more of God's word, you get faced with these situations. See, many of you, how many believe in Christ? Now, honestly, you you have you accept his sacrifice on the cross. I mean, seriously, how many of you accept his sacrifice on the cross? You truly accept his sacrifice, and you know that he died and bled and suffered and descended into Sheol and was raised, right? Victorious. He paid the price for you in full of every sin that you would commit. How many of you say yes to that? Listen, because if you do, do you not know? You do not have troubles like the world does. Your troubles are something else. You may not be able to identify, or maybe you didn't even know, that your troubles are not like the world's troubles. Your troubles are not even like the troubles you had prior to accepting Christ. But your troubles, your troubles, let me give you an image. Your troubles is God calling the host of heaven down into your life. You can't see them, they can see you. They're watching everything in your life and everything connected to your life. And God sends them a task to arrange your life in a specific way. You find yourself in trouble. You think you're alone, but you're not. You're surrounded, not by devils. No, but by the host of heaven. You're totally visible to the Lord, so is your situation, so is your mindset, so is your heart, so is everything in your life. Because at that moment, God has committed his self to raising you. Do you hear me? That's your troubles. That's what you call trouble, is God's commitment to raise you. Don't ever think for a moment that somehow you got yourself into something and God is just nowhere near you. Untrue. Why? Because you accepted his son. When you accept his son, you are never left alone. Do you know all this, what I'm saying is biblical? Do you not know that your situation is supernaturally designed? It is orchestrated. Based upon what you do, it is still orchestrated, carefully managed. Why do you think you were never taken out throughout the process of all the correction you've gone through? Because nothing on earth nor in the heavens has power to take you out. That's why. That's why. Nothing has power to take you out. You know and I know you should have been taken out by now. You know and I know it should have been far worse. It should have been far worse. But see, something remained. You can still read. You can still read. You can still look in the word of God. Why is that so important? Because God will never cut that avenue off. You still have a mindset towards Christ. I'm telling you right now, you have the host of heaven around you watching your entire situation. You are not by yourself. You have not been by yourself because you're bought with a price. When you said yes, that was a very high price that was paid just for you. Let me, let me mess you up for a few minutes. See, before you said yes, God indeed paid the price for you. Before you said yes. And there's a reason why. you got to ask you, how could he pay the price for me before I ever said yes? Because God knows your origins. 
come to find out, only those who are of a specific origin will ever say yes. And all those who are of a specific origin will always end up on a specific path. So that means the heavens have been waiting for you. Satan has done everything he could do. Listen, Satan did everything he could do to get you to say no, and he failed. He failed. No matter how sick you are, no matter how what your situation is, Satan failed in making you say no to Christ. He failed. He failed. Hmm? He failed. He failed. He failed. You don't think for a moment that if Satan could, he would take you, he would kill you. He'd rather you not even be alive. You. He'd rather you not be alive. He failed. He failed. See, so listen, before I take this break, it does not matter what you think you're good at or not good at. It doesn't matter what you think you've caused or did not cause. It matters that you said yes to Christ. See, because you still may not know that Christ has a promise that he made over your life. You didn't know that? You did not know that the work of Christ continues in your life? And when you sit there and say, well, I don't think I'm going to make it, what you're actually saying is Jesus is going to fail. Do you know that? That's what you're saying. And you've been saying that for quite some time, and yet you still believe. How is that possible? How many times have we said to ourselves, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it, right? But in our heart of hearts, we're saying, Lord, don't let me fail, right? Isn't that how we do? The Lord Jesus is quite serious. Remember, he said he went to go prepare a place for you, for you, for you. He did. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He also told us through the word what the will of God is for your life, that he not lose you. That he not lose any of us. And again, what identifies you and your origins? You said yes to Christ. See, you said yes to Christ before you had a full picture of Christ. No one actually had to convince you to say yes to Christ. And chances are that moment that hit you in your life happened in the privacy of your own area which means you may have gone to the altar you may have accepted christ but there a moment came a moment an intimate moment where the whole picture of christ became very real how many gave their life to christ when nobody knew about it right and listen nobody knew about it nobody you were by yourself you had already given your life to christ publicly but you were by yourself right and a moment hit you. I mean, it really hit you. And in that moment, a sincerity hit you. And that's when you really gave your life to Christ. Huh? My, my. How can that be so common of a story? You know what that means? Nobody external did that. No, no, no. That was a moment between you and the Lord. That was a moment that was real. See, nobody prompted that one. The world didn't prompt that one. No, no, that was a moment. And in that moment, it did, if you can remember back in that moment, didn't you realize you could see yourself for the first time for who you actually were in comparison to Christ and the distance was enormous. When I saw myself for the first time, I said, my God, I have no business I mean, I, you're talking about a conflict because I said, you, you died for me. You shouldn't have, but I accept. I was so humbled, but I knew I was so distant. And I was so humbled by the fact that he being so holy was sent a sacrifice for me because I was nothing. For the first time, I saw who I was in a true light. And in that true light, nothing came forward but humility and meekness. 
that's full of thanks, no bragging, no feeling in me saying I deserve this. This is no boldness or anything else. Nope, it wasn't that. It was a brokenness, an acceptance, a brokenness. It was so many things thrown into one. It was a real moment. And when you saw yourself for the first time, it's almost like everything that you were became highly evident in that one moment of time. And who Jesus is became highly evident in that one moment of time. I mean, everything was so clear. I call that a moment of clarity. Hear me on this. This is something that comes to everybody before they die. And it's up to them to choose. Some of you have children and you're saying, well, I don't know what they're going to choose. Listen, when the moment of clarity comes, there is no influence that can interfere with that. And a person will choose based off the truth of who they really are. Some will reject. They will. Some will accept but it's going to be based on the truth. Now, since that time, you may have had falls and slips and dips and mishaps and everything else, but you're still breathing. You're still going and you, you still believe in Christ. That's the biggest thing. Somebody asked me, well, how do you know if God is done with you? Because He, you will no longer believe in his son, Jesus of Nazareth. That's how you know you will not believe in Jesus. When God is done with you, when you're cast aside, you no longer believe in Jesus of Nazareth. You'll know of him, but you will not believe in him. That's how you know that you are still in this race. You're still in this race. Can you see it? That's why you don't walk around Condemning yourself. Get out of that mindset. Accept where you are right now. But most importantly, accept this one thing. That you still believe in Yahshua HaMashiach. That Satan has failed. And that you have a desire to go forward with Christ. Tell everything in your environment that. I choose to go forward with Christ. That's what you tell everything. You know how things come to you and they say, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do here? What are you going to do there? How many times you lay back on your bed and you say, what am I to do? What am I to do? Time for you to run some things off. And you tell everything. I choose to go forward with Christ. Because that's the truth. You know what the Lord does with your truth? He will seal it. If it's bound in the realm of truth, it is sealed. Do you know that? It becomes precious to the Most High. And if it's precious to the Most High, Satan has no power over it. Let me give you part two and I'll take a break. Now, because you do love the Lord like you do, because you do have a desire to go forward with Christ, no matter what issue you're in right now, you desire to go forward with Christ. Right? That means you believe in his kingdom. Look around. At your environment. How much stuff is yours? Now remember you belong to a pretty big family. A real family. Of the living God. Whose kingdom is coming. And that kingdom. Is growing within you also. There are so many people who have. Losses. They do. You know why they have losses? You can lose something. That does not belong to your main family. You can never lose anything. You can never lose a thing. In fact, everything that belongs to the kingdom is never lost in the first place. And it is, in fact, something of usage. So you have a second step. You do. Instead of looking at things, right, like it's just yours, I want you to look at everything as a tool for the kingdom of the living God. See it as a tool for the kingdom of God. What I'm telling you is this. In your heart, in your heart of hearts, own nothing here. Though it's right there in front of you, don't own it. Though you paid for it, don't own it. Let it be a tool for the kingdom of God. 
and declare it as such. And use it as such. And get on with it. See, because within you is wrapped up some desires of tasks that you've not shared with anybody. And you're wondering, well, when is the Lord going to start with me? When do I do my thing? Right? But you can't do your thing with the mindset of the world. Nor can you have any hooks put in you that can pull you back once you begin. So take a serious look at all of what's yours and dare to own nothing. Let it be for, for the service of the kingdom. And you know what the service of the kingdom is? It is for what God cares about the most. God sent his son to save you. God is saving others in the earth. The work of the kingdom is for the salvation of those in the earth. Listen, when you do that, if I have anything here that is for service of the kingdom, do you not know that Satan is not permitted to touch it? He can't. There have been thieves that have walked right in and took nothing. There's a there's a recording of, secu- of security footage. How can a thief walk in, right, get ready to do something, and all of a sudden he's confused, in a confused state, goes around in about six circles. Now, the person didn't come in that way. It's like he hit a brick wall of something that caused that person to be just totally drunk or something, and the person did some circles and walked right back out. How can that be? And how can that happen more than once in more than one location? Most people are sitting around trying to guard everything they have. If you have something on this earth, good luck guarding it. So I'll say it again. If you love your Lord, then own nothing. Let it be the service of the kingdom. That's something only you can do. Nobody else can do that. Nobody else can demand that of you. That's something only you can do. I have a weird philosophy. You know what it is? I'll never have anything that I'm not ready to part with. There it is. I will not have anything close to me that is not used for someone else. I will not do it. I won't do it. I won't do it because if I ever do that, I'll get in the habit of doing that. Before you know it, I'm going to have a place full of junk. If I can't give it away, I don't need it either. And when I do give something away, I don't give away. You know how people say, well, you know, I can't fit this anymore. And nobody really wants this here. So let me, let me go give it to so-and-so. I don't do that. I'll give away the very thing I can't do without. I give away the best. I do. If I had two items exactly the same, one was scarred up and the other one was still in the package, I would give away the one in the package and keep the one scarred up. That's what happens. Do you know what you know what takes place with me though? The Lord supplies me in very strange ways. I'm not talking about tangible things either. No. There are times when I run across folks who have problems and issues that no one has been able to answer, and at that moment by the Holy Spirit, the Lord will put, make that go right through me to that person. There are ideas, solutions that just pop up from nowhere to give to someone in a heartbeat. The Lord knows I would rather have an idea than all the money in the world. I would rather have a solution for someone than all the assets in the world. The Lord knows that. See, because I can be mobile that way. I don't have to be tied down to one spot. That means I'm at home everywhere. That's what it means. But you're meant for so much more, especially in this time. This is your time. This is your, anything that's happened to me in my life that the Lord has truly blessed, you can have a thousand times more. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Any effect that you think I have on anybody, you can have a thousand times greater effect on those you'll be in contact with Do do you guys understand that? Any word the Lord has given me that's done any good in your life, the Lord will grant you much greater. Now it's time for you all to see the truth. To see the truth is to operate in that truth, right? Don't slip back into the days of flesh where you start admitting defeat. Either way, either way, have this understanding. When the trial comes, 
That's when you actually, that's when you come forward. That's when you realize and always understand it's a trial. Never be so overwhelmed that you forget it's a trial. Remember, it's a trial. It truly is a trial. And choose according to the spiritual heart within you and see what your father will do for you in your life. See, because here, here, here's the whole outcome to all of it. Once, once, once the Lord demonstrates in your life that, yes, he can deliver you. Do you know what will happen to you? You will never doubt him ever again. That's called confidence. And Lord knows all of us, we need confidence in these end days. See how that works? The Lord gave me confidence. So I can be quite stubborn in the craziest of situations. And I don't need to prove anybody wrong. I don't need to point out anybody's flaws. The Lord told me in all cases, stand in truth as you can stand. That's precisely what I do, and the Lord does the rest. And he will use you to demonstrate his principles in ways you'd never believe. You will truly be an instrument, because in the end, somehow, some way, someone's going to glorify the living God through you. Somehow, some way, you will be used as an instrument to glorify the living God. See, we don't know how. We don't know how to orchestrate things like that. People try to do that themselves. And, and often it falls flat, but the Lord knows how. And if that ever happens, then guess what? If that happened to me with just one person, then all the suffering in my life would have contributed to the salvation of that one soul, and it's worth all the sufferings in my life. Do you know that? I'm not looking for 10 people, for five people, for two people. Just the one. That's all. Just the one. Just the one. Just to truly be used. That's all. That's all. Nothing bigger. I don't look for anything bigger. Just that one. But I know it takes me standing in the truth of the living God. Not my own truth. His truth. And the time that's coming upon people. Look at Texas. Look at that derecho that tore up Houston. You think those people would have... Do you think... There are a lot of people hurting in Texas right now. They are. That song, Washed by the Water, I played that for them. I did. Because the water was very damaging to a lot of what they had. But it's also a moment. A moment beyond normal comprehension. It's still a moment. Still a moment. And these days are only the beginnings. They're only the beginnings. Get ready for the greatest transition anybody has ever known. I don't know how to state that in a way that would have an impact to people. A lot of people are going to try and cushion what we're going through. Don't allow anybody to put cushions on what we're about to go through. Don't do that. It's just going to get heavier for them. But the Lord desires you to have confidence in him. Now, you will not be shaken. Listen. Everything must be shaken, so only that which cannot be shaken will stand. Everything must be tried, so that only the truth will be left standing. You have that truth in you. You do. So now it's time for great sincerity. Never forget the assembly of the saints of the living God. Never forget your brothers and your sisters. Never forget prayer, encouragement. Don't forget that. Don't forget to join together. Right? Instead of pointing to someone in the body of Christ who criticize, join together and pray for that person and see the Lord's hand work in their lives. There's nothing better than a group prayer upon a person that does not know it for good. And then you sit back with that group and see the transition of that person. And that group will sit back and thank God for his deliverance of that individual that has no idea you prayed for them. You're here to do a real work. You know what a fake work is? A fake work is when you go out there and you want everybody to know it was you who did the work. A real work is when you pray anyway and nobody knows it. But that group, they pray for that person. And they give God glory because they see God working in that person's life. And that person gives God glory because they'll say, I don't know how. But Lord, you worked in my life. That's true work. A true work is work you're not seeking to be, to be noticed for. The true work is that 
work of the heart that nobody can see. When you want to be noticed for a work, you're just building up a resume. True work is to not have a resume at all. Remember, our Father's kingdom is not likened to this earth at all. This earth is modeled. The systems in this earth are modeled after another kingdom. They are not the kingdom of the Most High. I'll be back in a minute. Let me not ramble. We got to go over some uh, few a few news pieces. This is Friday, and tomorrow I'm going to talk to you guys about artificial intelligence. I have to. I want you guys. I want you guys in the uh, position. It is going to get shaky and shifty. And everything else in between. Hmm? Somebody said, when you mentioned about, past Paul, about being no children, was that because of disaster, disease? I don't know. There were no children on the earth. There will be no children on the earth. I do trust what the Lord gives me. People will sit on this earth empty. The same people who blame people now, most likely, those who blame have someone to blame, right? And they keep someone to blame. Many of them are going to be the same ones in a time where nothing but emptiness is on this earth and they're going to blame everything and the living God for the demise of their lives they will still have. They're going to sit here on this earth and have no one. They're going to try to escape the emptiness by drugs and everything else. They're going to wish they were dead. But they'll have no resolve to go through with it. The earth will be utterly empty. You're not going to hear dogs and cats and kids and, or anything. It's going to be sparse. There'll be one group here and another group 50 miles away, another group 100 miles away. The inhabitants at that time of the earth will be few. It's not a place that people will want to go. They just won't want that. During the daytime, people cover up the windows with sheets they see on the inside. But they do weird things. Women will trade their bodies just to get a hold of a drug that will numb the pain and the emptiness. Guys will do likewise with other guys doing anything under the sun to get a hold of a drug to escape the emptiness. And those who love to torture people and those who are truly taken over by demons, they're going to be running to and fro making sure that everybody is extremely corrupted. But you will not hear any child on the face of the earth No woman will have a child. No children. Only sorrow. Emptiness. And even then in that time, if they would repent, they could be saved, but they will not repent. They won't repent during those days. We'll be back in a minute. Right here at COT. Okay, everybody, I am back. Here we go. I want to find something for you guys real quick. Other than, uh, we know what the prophecies are, right? We know they're happening. The sun is doing its uh, wicked shimmy. Uh, But, placement of the saints during this time, it's going to change. In other words, a lot of people who are encouraged by blessings. Think about this. Think about this. How many of you, I just want to point this out, When it seems like you're not blessed, that's when you feel you're abandoned. Anybody like that? You see other people get blessed, and sometimes it's almost like you're not blessed. Your life goes in the opposite direction. Things happen in your life. Oftentimes you can start to feel a little um, exiled, a little down by that, right? Frustrated, right? But understand this. I want you to put yourself in a position. Imagine nobody else is on this planet but you. You're the only one. Right? You have access to everything. You can have anything you want. Think about it for a moment. You can do anything you want. Because you're the only one here. And even suppose no harm comes to you that be miserable or what? You think that'd be miserable? Think about it. How many of you have something good that happens? And the first thing you do is you want to share that happiness with somebody else. 
And that's what causes you to enjoy whatever it was. And the truth is, when you have something good happen to you, you want to share it with somebody else, right? That makes a moment. If you can't share anything with anybody else, it makes everything useless. If you were the last person here on this earth and you had access to everything, your health was good, no harm came to you, you could do anything you wanted, then that'd be absolutely miserable. Some people may think they can have a good time, but the truth is, right, you would have nothing to share with anybody. No challenges, no anything which makes your life utterly empty. Now, snap back from that time back into this time now. You have a situation. It's not working out right. Everybody else's is, but yours is not. Can't you see that a bit differently? Hmm? Especially since you're a Christian. Because in truth, the people that you're looking at, that you may think are blessed, they're having challenges too. You just can't see it from the outside. Truth is... Everybody is having some sort of challenge. They're perceived differently. You can't see them all. There are troubles that some of you have that nobody else can see. Correct? Nobody else can see. Oh, and by the way, God never put you here by yourself, did he? He didn't do that. He put you here with a bunch of other people. He did. So what makes a person actually feel that way, like they're left behind? Here it comes. You ready? Comparison. When you compare yourself to somebody else, that's where you're messing up. When you start to measure your life against somebody else's life, that's when you start to feel down. That's when you start to feel abandoned. The truth is you're not. The truth is you're in a position, right, that is extremely unique and extremely blessed in the first place. You just may not perceive that yet, right? A time will come when the inhabitants of the earth are minimal. I can assure you at that time, you would not want to be one of those who roams the earth in hopelessness. Right? God put you in a place of fullness. Not by blessings as people of the world understand blessings. But a fullness. Fullness to explore. Right? You have a fullness to experience. You can hear so many different points of view. But it's when you begin to compare your life to somebody else's. That's when you can feel like you're in the darkness. But you're not. It's through that comparison that a lot of people mess up. Now, God never wanted us to compare our lives to somebody else's. Men did that. Your father didn't do that. Right? Who made the mirror? God? Or did man make a mirror? Man did. Why did man make a mirror? And when people look in a mirror, what do they start doing? They start imagining how they look in comparison to somebody else. Well, unless you're trying to, you know, fix something. But for the most part, that mirror is what you look in before you go out to everybody else. So you can be acceptable to everybody else so you can fit in, so you can look just as good as somebody else. Most often people look in a mirror, they get discouraged from going out in the first place, don't they? What if a mirror had never existed and nobody was able to see themselves? What if you had no capability to perceive yourself? Imagine that one. You wouldn't look in a mirror and compare yourself to somebody else. People would be very different. Right? When I first got to the military, before going into the military, everybody wore civilian clothes and, you know, there was this comparison, that comparison. When everybody wore the same uniform, something happened. When everybody was bald headed, something happened. You stopped looking at how somebody looked. You did. You didn't even look at how somebody dressed because everybody looked alike. Yet, everybody was unique. You began to know each other by character. That's how you knew the other person. You would look at another person who may look like somebody, you know, right down a couple formations below you, two, two ranks below you or something like that, right? But you began to know people by their character. It was by their character, not by how they looked. You didn't, you no longer judged or evaluated a person by how they looked. You knew them by their character. 
you do them on a much deeper level. And, and when you do this, that is instant stress gone. Nobody's looking at you to see what your hair looks like, to see what this looks like. But you have to remain within regulations. For the most part, nobody looked at it. That way they saw you by the character you conveyed, by what you did for somebody else and what you did not do for somebody else. That created bonds that were unbreakable. I saw the most oddball people get together. And they were truly brothers or sisters. It was the most amazing thing. But when you can look better than somebody else, when you start to categorize yourself in these different areas of life, right? That's when people purposely separate. They don't care what you did. They don't care what you can do. They care about what you look like. That's the first evaluation to see if you fit or not. And if Christians begin to do this, they lose themselves. Totally lost. Right? I remember I went to a church one time and, and everybody, every, all the males have these long coat, these long dress tops with these, uh, you know, flashy color shoes. And I was like, what in the world? What in the world? You, you look at a diversity of things and you see that everybody keeps up with a specific style. Anybody comes in outside of that style, they're looked at in a very strange way, odd way, right? So much for come as you are. I think I mess people up by the music I play most often. I do. They expect one thing, they get something else. When we do this and compare ourselves to everybody else, we do something that Satan did. Your adversary did that. That's what he did to himself and God. That's why he fell. And it seems like right before a severe fall, that same thing takes place. We compare ourselves with somebody else and then based on what the difference is what somebody looks like we either elevate ourselves or shrink back into nothingness causing depression and everything else so i have a suggestion a small one during this time take note of something god made you look like you look he made you speak like you speak right all these are tributes that you have or what the lord has given you and they're for a reason. So you may not know this, but you attract specific types of people. Do you know that? You do. You attract specific types of people. God did not make a mistake in having you look the way you look. He didn't. He did not make a mistake in what you are. He did not. He knows exactly what he's doing. You are meant to call a specific type of person. But if you have this mindset of the world, you're going to look for what somebody else has. That's called covetousness. We're not to covet anything that anybody else has. But life is based off covetousness. It really is. We covet everything somebody else has. And folks, that's not going to work out too well for any of us. We're just trying to eliminate an area in a Christian's life. That is extremely destructive, deceitful. It really is. It's worse than cancer for a believer. It is covetousness. Now, what happens when a person no longer desires to be in the same category as somebody else in the world or to have what they have or to dress like they dress or to look like they look? They can become that unique individual God made them to be. You know, in the Bible it says... Don't, uh, I'll paraphrase, don't get caught in strange clothing. And what that means is, see, when God touched anybody, he also clothed them. And that clothing, he does recognize the garments he recognizes, right? But strange garments is something man has made unto himself. Something unrecognizable by the creator. Something brand new and weird, right? It is. God did not make a mistake in you. You're the first person that has to know that. That he did not make a mistake in how he made you, in who you are. He didn't make a mistake. It's the world that influences you to change yourself to their standards. And we know that for a long time, we have been living a life where we have been trying to camouflage ourselves in the world. We don't want to attract all that attention. Yet, we want attention. We live in these controversial ways. Don't you think it's time for us to make that full full circle, right? Don't you think it's time that we finally accept 
who God made us to be, start from there and go forward with the Lord in truth and honesty. Not trying to live our lives or can paralyze with somebody else. Social media, right? The suicide rate has gone up because young kids compare themselves to even more people than those at the school. And because they may not, they think they don't look. How many think you don't look good enough? Let's put that out there. How many, how many would say, how many would look in a mirror and they say, you know, I don't look good enough for this and I don't look good enough for that. I don't look good enough for that. How many would say, you know, I'm too, too big for this. I, I, I'm, I'm shaped funny or something like that. How many would say that? Well, you do that because you're comparing yourself to other people in the world. That's what you're doing. Right now, there's this health craze, correct? Here it is. There's a health craze going around. And everybody wants to be healthy, causing those who may not have an emphasis on losing weight or something like that, causing them to feel like they're left a thousand miles behind. It makes them feel like outcasts. Don't do that anymore. Look in the mirror. First of all, look in the mirror is where you start. Look in the mirror and say, thank you, Lord, for who I am. And if you want to work on your health, Right, because you want your physical stature better or something like that, so you can carry on a bit better than work on that. But do not work on it with a mandate of the world. Don't do that. Don't do it in comparison to anybody else. But realize God knows exactly who you are. Your flesh is only good for the earth, and then you're gone. But don't compare yourselves to other people. You are the only one like you. Do you know that? You are unique, and there's nobody on earth like you. You're the first one and the last one of your kind. Do you know that? Yes, we're all human beings, but there is not another you. Where is it? There's only one you, and you have to be unique. You're supposed to be unique. Remember that. There's so many Christians who are depressed from that very thing. They, their lives are consumed with trying to be like everybody else. Now, they're spending all that time on that, right? They're going to miss preparations. For example, preparations of confidence in the most high. How many people have absolute confidence in the living God and what he decides? I do. I do. If the Lord told me right now, he came to me right now, and he said, Mike, it's your time to go. Let's go. How many of you think I would say, no, nah, I want to stay? I wouldn't want to stay. I wouldn't. If, if I was supposed to go and the Lord said, Mike, I want you to stay here another 50 years, I'd say so be it. Why? I'm fine with the decision the Lord makes. Why? Because I trust him. Why? Because I can see him in my past. That's why. In the hurt days, in the good days, the joyful days, the not so joyful days, I can see him in the past. How do I do that? I can find him in the word of God. Every situation I've ever been through, you can find him in the word of God and in your life. As it turns out, a lot of people say, well, you know, I don't have a lot of proof of God in my life. Are you kidding? If you've had more than two troubles in your life, the Lord was there and you can find it. A lot of people try to find God in all the good things that happen in their lives, not understanding. The good times is so that you can get a breath to go back to your training because you're training for an eternal life. You're training to actually grow in truth into your character. You're actually choosing a family, a holy family, through everything you experience in your life. And when it's all said and done, it's not it, the, the question of how everybody treated you will never come forward. The question of how you treated everybody else that will come forward. Like that person that did something bad to you. The question is not going to be how bad did they treat you? The question is going to be how good did you treat them? Can you see that? Because in the end, you're going to have no scars, no wounds, no cuts, no bruises, no anything. Just an experience. And based on that experience, who have you become? Have you become? The Lord is so masterful in these things that he does, right? The quicker we can realize them, the better off we are. A spiritual battle is coming. 
It's already starting to build. Most people can't see in this political war, right? Who's behind it? It's a highly coordinated act. You have Trump, you have Biden, all these people in between. They're just people. But they're operating by influences. You can see that. Strong influences. They are. You can almost see the spirits behind the activities that they undergo. But you can absolutely see God's principles wherever anybody goes. You can see it. When you apply those principles to what you see, a clear picture for that's when you find out a lot of Christians are wasting time. They're wasting valuable time embedding themselves in things that God said he would handle. And it's going to be too late to gain strength when the time is needed. Now, the world is not making preparations for the people. They're not. Did anybody make preparations for Texas? Anybody? Anybody? Did anybody make preparations for Texas? Did anybody make preparations for Houston, for Galveston, for all those places in Texas? Did anybody make preparations for them? No. You think they knew the floodwaters were coming? Do you think they knew that the the ratios were coming? Did they make preparations for those people? Last year, last year, and the year before, Right? If anybody has been near Fort Hood, Texas, it was the type of conversation that was happening. Right? Because I won't shut my mouth about things that Texas is about to undergo. I won't do it. And so there are people there that would have been in some bad places. They would have been. But they had their eyes open to the Lord, and these were, you know, folks in uniform and some civil servants. They heeded the warning. Then they could see it slowly starting, right? We have other states that we're trying to work with, too, to get them ready to go. The fires are coming. And how many of you research escape routes in your town? Do you guys know the escape routes in your towns? Do you guys, have you actually gotten a map of your town? To look at that map to see if a fire starts. How do you get out of that place? Folks in Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana. What about folks in Iowa? All the way in Iowa. Are you guys prepared? We know the fires are coming. We know those fires are going to be in places they have not been in before. Are people prepared? Or is going out to New York City already? They have tried to calm the people by not saying anything. Same thing happened in Israel. And then Hamas took people by force. And nobody was the wiser. Nobody could halt what Hamas did. Because there was nobody there prepared for it. Nobody was prepared for it. I remember one time somebody got mad at me because of the East Coast. They did. All I could do was pray. I said, Lord, they they can't understand what I'm saying about the East Coast. It's too far out. You know, the Lord conveyed to me that it would take a person eight years to be prepared on the East Coast for what's coming to the East Coast. Do you not know that we're at year seven? Do you know that? We're at year seven. Right now, we're at year seven. Do you know that if I, if anybody were to say something about the East Coast, which I did, Right? Seven years ago, people got upset because they were looking for something to happen the next day. A person cannot just up and relocate their entire life in a week. They can't do that. That takes years to do. They had ample time. So when the seacoast is back to the, to the, to the west side of Kentucky, I'm just wondering. What will people do then? You know what they'll do? First, they'll say they didn't know. But the truth was, they wanted to hear nothing about it. You have people right now who are trying to warn people that we live in somewhat of a binary system. And it is. It's kind of one of those things you can't prove it. Right? You can't. But are people mentally preparing themselves to see the instant formation of mountain ranges 
to see the USA crack? You know, it is already said that this continent is going to turn over. The whole of the USA is going to flip over. Do you know that? Do you know how violent of an act that would be? The Gulf of Mexico. What would you do if it caught on fire? A sustained fire. You know what would happen to Texas and Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, parts of Florida and Georgia? And be a disaster. All that heat would travel directly to Florida, causing Florida to be almost uninhabitable. No one wants to hear things like that. There are good people who tried to warn people. And then they prosecuted those people. Three of them sit in prison to this very day. One is 81 years old. They're in prison. They've been imprisoned for what they were saying about the binary system. Why? Because it caught traction. Too many people started to believe, listened to what they said, and started to believe. That's what happens to people who are very precise about what they know. And I've told you guys before, if you really want to get some critical information out, if you ever want to do that, you have to utilize the Word of God. You have to hope that people will regard the Word of God. You've got to find the case or the incident in the Word of God. You can describe bits and pieces about a situation, but you cannot give it to them directly because you'll only have one chance to do that. Only one. I believe that the Lord protects a lot of people because if if you had the absolute truth, you guys would probably try and give the absolute truth. And in so doing, you would be removed out of the way. And we know by reading the word of God, the Lord had already said this would happen to them. The USA, enduring more storms than any other nation on earth. Why? Why would the USA be the main target of so many storms? Well, let's go ahead and look at the truth. It is the USA that had the mantle of responsibility, it assumed. It was the one that dared to be different from everybody else. It was the one that so quickly adopted the word of God and built a culture based upon that. And now in these days, they, they separate themselves from it. Once having governed the world, we now cause confusion and are very divisive to nations in the world. We're now compromising on many different levels and we have abandoned the principles of the Most High. For example, one of the principles of the Most High is do not withhold your hand from your own flesh. That charity starts at home. We have to ensure that the American people are taken care of. Not just say that, but actually do that. So do we Christians. That's not what's happening. And it's getting worse. And a time was always coming when it would get worse, when people would abandon sound doctrine and they would start doing other things. We live in those times now. You live in those times, right? Now that we have this, some demonstration happening, And a great loss of lives is coming. It's imperative. All of us prepare ourselves for such. And get ready for what's happening inside the body of Christ. And let me tell you about this. When somebody passes away, I'm going to give you a small example. When somebody passes away within the body of Christ, and then somebody else comes in and says, please pray for so-and-so. And nobody, nobody catches it or possibly they don't pray or somebody doesn't see them praying then the person perceives they're not getting any prayer and they get mad at everybody you ever see that happen you ever see somebody pass away in somebody's family and that person becomes the most vicious person you ever knew in on earth anybody ever see that this is what you have to prepare yourselves for inside the body of christ see there's a season where we're all tried emotionally I mean emotionally. We're going to go through things like that. We're going to see things like that. And based upon someone's hesitation, possibly, or they missed the whole thing, based on the reaction, you're going to have a lot of Christians that will curse another Christian out. It's going to hurt those who are bystanders because they won't have a solution to solve the issue. You guys have seen people do that very thing. And you've tried to come in and calm both sides, and it gets worse. You know how that works. 
You know that once a person hits that level of compromise, they're not going to accept anything that's consoling. They can become angry, have outbursts, and everything else. How do you keep your position with the Lord? Right? And still stand by a person like that, realizing they're compromised at the moment. But it's going to become so apparent, and it's going to spread like wildfire. Many people will go through this. What do you think will happen to the body of Christ? When about 50% of the body of Christ starts losing people like that. What's going to happen then? Do you know what the Lord said? Does anybody know what the Lord said? He told us something that was quite heavy. Something underrated, it's my belief. He said what he was talking about. The day of resurrection. The day of the Lord. He said that day will not come. Lest there come a falling way first. We can pause right there. Now that's very devastating to me. That Paul would ever mention a falling way. It's very devastating. It's devastating because it implies that there are going to be people who were once believers in Christ among you who will turn against you. Are you prepared for that? The Lord told us that the hardest time a Christian would go through is that time of the shaking of the heart. How many Christians are preparing for that? No people are preparing for the natural disasters. Yeah. Are you preparing to be betrayed? Even by those of your own household. Are you? Because the Lord has given you practice. See, if the Lord were going to raise us to withstand anything like that, wouldn't he have family members and close friends betray us already? Of course he would. Wouldn't he have subjected us to smaller cases of betrayal, of people turning their backs on us and backstabbing us and this, that, and the other. Of course he would. But here's a question. How many of you identified that type of training? When the Lord raises us, he does so for real. He does not give us a bunch of fake situations. He gives us small-scale situations. It's the same principle of stewardship. He said, if I can't trust you with the small things, don't expect the bigger things. But if you're faithful over a little bit, I'll make you ruler over it all. It's the same principle. So then God takes a truthful situation, something very real, but at small scale, has us undergo it to feel the emotions, the upsets, and everything else, so that when the big one hits, we will have experience with it. See, a lot of people don't know that. You know what they do when it comes? They reject it so much, they refuse the training. And a worse time will come of the heart. That's why the Lord, he practically begged us to be full of meekness and humility. Why? Because if you're not, you're going to be compromised when this happens. Anybody who's not meek and humble could potentially murder in response to this. They could potentially murder. So isn't, in fact, isn't it true that for all of you, the Lord has begun preparing you for this, for the falling away that's in the word of God. See, those are some of the real things in the end times. Many do not want to discuss what we're not discussing. We're just not. Because it's not one of those topics that people are going to, you know, listen to. They don't want to hear that. But we can see it in the world because it already begun in the church. Judgment starts in the house of God. And indeed, before the, the fracture of people in the USA, didn't you take note of God's principle? Let me show you how true they are. Before, before Obama, before Trump, before Biden, before the divide, right? Before this incredible divide of people, something happened online something happened with churches don't you guys remember don't you remember the time when all the houses of god began to separate and to even fight against one another and people from this organization's chat room would invade another chat room or have a mission to take down this church and take down that church don't you remember 
Uh, because you guys were in the middle of it. Don't you remember? Don't you remember? Do you remember the divisiveness that was between one organization and another? Don't you remember the competition that was involved? The hurtful things that were said? I remember. Many people came to COT. They said, look, you know, I'm here in COT because the other folks, they're just cursing along and doing everything and they're fine with it. And I think that's not it. They, they're just fighting each other. They're getting worse. I remember we were attacked by a couple ministries. We were. I remember that. I remember active campaigns to try and turn people away from different folks. It was vicious. It was cruel. But it started, my, my point is it started in the house of God. It started among those who believe. Then wouldn't you know it, as soon as people got over it, what happened? It went right to the world. Even the time of ISIS, before ISIS ever came on the scene, we discussed that very thing before ISIS was even talked about. We discussed a scenario because it was in the house of God. And based on that principle, you guys saw it trickle right into the world. People were in organizations saying they had a special mission from God to expose this and to expose that, and to take down this and to take down that. The very thing, ISIS, that was their premise. That was the premise of ISIS. That's exactly what they said. That we have to take down this and take down that and expose this. That's what ISIS said. But I told people, watch this trickle out in the world. As soon as it's done with us, nothing will start in the world until it begins in us first. What do you have happening now? Does anybody see what's happening now? Anybody? Anybody see what's happening now? Seems. It seems. Now you have organizations actually starting to combine in groups. And these groups won't tolerate other organizations. Do you know that? So it's like a split without all the fussing and the exposure in between. It's just a split. You take several organizations, they get together, they won't tolerate the other organizations. That's what you see happening. And now, unlike the other times, they're not independent. They're actually starting to come together. They're combining. They're combining right now. Right now, they're combining. That's going to go into the world. You're going to see these splits in the world begin to combine and coalesce into powerful groups, large, powerful groups. You're going to see the same echoed thing. See, right now, it's in silent mode. It's happening, but it's in silent mode. It's going to break out very soon. The viciousness will come back again. And it, it, it's so funny because what causes it are ideologies. Right. I see more now and ever. There are people out there in COT who believe in the rapture. There are some who don't believe in the rapture. I already told you, I have a belief in Christ, not in a thing. I have a belief in Christ. But based off that, you see people split apart from each other, don't you? How can anybody split fellowship with a person? Because one believes the rapture is going to be at this moment. Some believe the rapture is going to be at that moment. That's right, the spirit of offense, for he said it. And Jesus said, it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to whom, woe to him through whom they come. Offense actually means a stumbling. Stumblings must come. Stumblings of what? Stumblings of doctrine, in fact. Those are what offenses are. When somebody stumbles at the meaning of the word, which does what? If you stumble at the meaning of the word you have a different interpretation so that means you have a different ideology and based on that ideology you're going to see people group together the same thing is going to happen to the world based on ideologies you're going to see countries fracture into multiple different pieces and those pieces will coalesce and fight against one another compete against one another here in the usa you're going to see a governor's guild get together 
And what that means is you're going to see four or five states get together. They're going to join forces by way of their governors and then by way of the states. And they will stand against another four or five states until you see the entirety of America fractured in multiple pieces. And then people are going to have to decide what ideology they agree with. And based on that agreement, that's where they're going to have to go. You're going to see people up and move based on their political affiliations right here in the USA. There will be pure Democratic neighborhoods and pure Republican neighborhoods and pure independent neighborhoods and everything in between. That's already beginning. It's beginning among leadership, governors, newly elected personnel who will not tolerate the views of another. It is vicious, it is violent, and death is coming as a result of it. Death is coming as a result of it. And I hate to tell you this, but it's going to boil down to those who are radicals for Christ and those who are not. Those who accept the new movements in the world and those who don't. Coming. Where's your position in all this? I'll be able to walk through every single place I desire to walk through that the Lord sends me. Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I believe that will be the time when America's hands are tied. For we're so turned inwardly, we cannot intervene in the Middle East. I believe simultaneously things will happen overseas. So long as we can put down any invasion so long as we can put down any military attempt to get to Israel, right? Any military attempt of some of these uh, other places to get to Israel to totally take it over and everything else, right? So long as we're in power to do that, it's not going to actually take place. The moment we're tied up inwardly is when it's going to happen. That moment won't last forever, but it will indeed take place. And I do believe after that time, there'll be some believers here in this country that when they rise up, when they get through all these different seasons, they're going to be strong, refined, purposed, that everything here is going to be restructured as such. I do believe that. But we have to have, we have to go through correction first. It's just like the independent lives of all of us. Suppose you believe in something that is, is not godly, but it sounds godly, but it's not. Here's what has to happen along with all. What do you think all this stuff is coming for anyway? The heavens, the binary system, right? The meteor storm that's coming that nobody is talking about, that everybody should be warned about. But they're not talking about it. It's not coming with a warning. Hope you know that. This meteor storm is not going to come with a warning. It's going to be like this one day. And the next day, everybody's going to be in trouble. That's how it hits. What about the big eruption in the ocean? There's going to be a large eruption in the ocean that trumps anything everybody ever saw. I know everybody is worried about Yellowstone. Yellowstone is not going to be the problem. It won't. And when that pyroclastic flow comes from the ocean to coastlines... There'll be little to no time to prepare before people realize what has actually happened, what the repercussions are. It will have happened. You guys who are dusty here in COT, you know that follows the colorful skies. It follows the time, right? And remember, I said this back in 2016, when people are going out to try and get pictures of the colorful skies. When they show the documentary of the inverted orcas or whales in the ocean, that pyroclastic flow is going to overtake the coastlines. It's coming. And you know what's so funny is that there's another colorful time coming in the skies. It's going to be so colorful. I guarantee you people are going to rush out and try and get pictures. Then they'll become an, an overwhelming night. When colors are all over the place, we can't help ourselves but to continue to observe. We can. Then you will see or know about that documentary. Those of you who watch the History Channel, Discovery Channel, or something like that, you will see a documentary of orcas inverted 
in the oceans. It'll be about six or seven of them inverted. You'll see the divers go down right, right, right within them. Flooding will be taking place, you know, naturally all the time. Then all of a sudden, a pyroclastic flow, something from the oceans, will cause a pyroclastic flow. That's a volcano, by the way. It's an eruption. That's an ocean eruption that ejected a lot of material. And it will overtake certain coastlines. That will only be the beginning, but it will be the end for a lot of people. That will be. And people are not thinking across those lines. You know why? It's fantastic. Sounds fantastic. Unfortunately, did it, did it sound fantastic when we were talking about the floods that were coming this year, last year? The change in the weather and the high winds. And now people are undergoing that same thing. Now, I'm not patting myself on the back saying I'm right either. I'm telling you there are warnings that are out there. Nobody's going to put it on a banner and advertise it to the world. I know I'm shifty in those things. And do you know why? Because COT is not going to get removed, banned, or any of those things. If any organization is accurate more than a couple times, you won't see that organization anymore. People have their ways of doing things. They do. So the Lord says, be as, what? Why is the serpent as harmless as a dove? Well, a serpent knows it's all of its surroundings. It knows to where everything is. That's why I have to do the KDs like I'm doing them. Do you guys know what happened when I announced the KD files? Our site had too many hits on it. Do you know that? That would have been a firestorm. It would have been. Now that everything has been delayed, most of the attention has been redirected to other places, which is good, so I can put them up now. Plus, we couldn't handle it anyway. There's no way we can handle that bandwidth. Now that it's not publicized so much, they'll be going up there. They'll be going up there. That that uh, character, that Mike guy from around the bushes, well, he's a character on the Internet, right? And so when certain things go out, then the traffic goes way up. So I have to take that into account and be very cautious and careful. Number one, nobody should ever be misguided. That's not going to happen. Number two, I got to be careful to communicate truth. But number three, I have to do it by God's timing. This is not going to edify me. I get no credit for anything, right? That's why we're set up the way we are. For a fictitious character cannot get credit for what they say, what they do, what they publish, they can't. I can receive no credit for my efforts here at COT or anywhere else. That's the way it is. And what's going to go in there is going to be quite controversial. Nevertheless, it's something that uh, I feel strongly that people need. So, I hope you guys are inwardly prepared because when they start blaming these shootings, the activities of these shooters on you, it's going to cause a bit of anxiety within organizations like this. You guys who are involved in organizations, pray for those organizations. Watch their backs. Never fail to pray for them. All those folks who are doing research in the heavens and things like that, pray for them also. Pray for them also. Now, lastly, let me cover this. All of you guys that do research, Sister Mayor, all you guys that do research, and you know about the formulas and online tools, you're going to have minimal access to those tools. And when they're gone, the only way you're going to be able to equate things to come up with a conclusion about something is to already have the formulas. Now, the, the formulas are free. They're free out there now. It'll take some legwork to compile all those formulas. It will. Try to get as many as you can. See, we're coming into a time where they're going to withdraw the average person from having knowledge about things. 
and it'll be redirected right back to these controlled sources again. You guys remember how the news used to be, right? You had to go watch the news to know anything or read a newspaper. But then when the online community began to build up, they built all these online tools and everybody thought it was cool and everything else. And then NASA and all these people put tools out for everybody thinking it was harmless. But now that same information is being used against governmental officials. That same information is being used for prosecutions. That same information is leading to radicalized individuals. So they're going to consolidate all of their sensory data and everything else to organizations that are syndicated or organizations who are sanctioned through them to be able to utilize it, which means controlled resources again. You'll notice that once these policies pass, the funding for these organizations will also be redirected. Oh, they're going to pull it away from public funding, right? And they're going to put it right in the domain of a controlled funding system. That's why they're going to pull the tools. Because if the public is not paying for it, the public need not see it but through controlled sources. So if you want to know any data on Soho in the future or something like that, you have to be part of these teams. You're going to have to get it from a, 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 some sort of controlled MSNBC or something like that. You will not be able to get it directly from JPL, directly from NASA, directly from all these different uh, outlets. That's not going to happen anymore. They're going to absolutely pull all that data. Earthquake data, that's going to be gone. Weather data, that's going to be gone. You're only going to get that weather data. You're going to see the same weather data everybody else does. You're not going to see special charts, UV charts and all that. So you're not going to see that anymore. So I'm telling you again, those who get the formulas, there are always ways to acquisition the data points themselves, like what the actual uh, UV representation is or something like that. There's always a way to do that. You have things at home to make sensors. And people have to know how, how to build those sensors to get the real numbers, right? You have to have multiple samples, but you can get the real numbers. But I'm telling you now, those things are going to be pulled from the net. I is coming out. Things will be different. People will once again look to, you know, several sources for everything. It's going to happen again. We were there once before, before all this Internet stuff back in 1992. We were there. You guys know this, right? So then some of us who are used to that, we're familiar with how it worked. You watch the news or read the newspaper like everybody else. And then you talked about it the next day. After the fact. That's why you should back up your data. They're not going to put that into effect nicely. All right. Have you guys noticed the rhetoric concerning cyber threats? It's about to go through the roof. It really is. And now that they have corporate personnel actually telling the, telling the public things. Oh, yeah, you know they're going to clamp it down. They're going to clamp it down. Be ready for those things. Right? Be ready for those. We are certainly getting ready here. We're getting ready here. Our data is, uh, that's why I put all those sensors where I put them. I still have to have wind data, temperature data, humidity data, UV data, all that data directly. I have to have that. So we can feed it all here and do it, do what we do. It took a long time, but it's complete. So we have our own weather stations all over the place so that we can, uh, you know, still output some things and come to some conclusions. With all of that being said, the foundation, the, the rock, what you center yourself on is back to the beginning. You ready? Have an understanding that since you said yes to Christ, everything happening in your life is orchestrated. It really is. Now listen, folks, I know I got to step up. I need all of you, all of you, all of you, everybody here listening to me. It's important to me that all of you are at the, at that level where you can actually see that. So in support of a great many things I've talked about tonight, I'll be working toward to get everybody up to speed. 
we're going to have to take care of this family fast, get everybody up to speed. Because outreach is beginning. It will increase. But that includes all of you. You have the say-so. You really do. You have a voice. You have the say-so here. You guys do. It's important that all of you are included in our moves next. A spiritual high time of strangeness is coming. Congress knows exactly what they're doing. They've coordinated with other countries. I told you guys in 2024, a briefing is coming up. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, you remember when I said the whole, that the world is going to know about a big UFO, right? They'll know, but there'll, there'll be UFO sightings that the world's going to know about. Dealing with that topic, that was back in 2022. I said that for 23, I believe. Yeah, 23. 23, I said that. 22, I said that. Or 23. We're still going to have to deal with that topic. But here's the difference. Here's the difference. See, you're going to be able to recognize several layers of this thing. Now, I got to give you a caution. You got to be careful what you listen to. I can tell you right now. I can tell you right now, if anybody starts edifying the works of the serpents, you got to be careful of those people. Do you hear me? Be careful. I'm talking spiritual here. Be careful. Because there are people who have adopted a lot of ancient writings that are known writings of what I would call the fallen angels. Now, it's not that the fallen angels spoke pure lies. No. Even Satan spoke the truth, but the result of his truth was death to humanity. That's how he lies. Satan lies by telling the truth. You have too many people who have adopted the writings of these ancients. And they're pushing it like never before. And they all have one thing in common. When they start mentioning Jesus, they have a hatred in their eyes. They can't stand to mention Jesus. You have some out there in that field that love the Lord. So I just gave you what to look for. If you hear somebody talking about these ancient writings, and when it comes to them talking about it, referring to Christ, they get upset. They get a bit aggressive. You, you can't. Take in from those folks who stand against your Lord. There's nothing they can give you. You will be tried by what they believe in, and it's going to fail them miserably. Remember, God, everybody has heard of a great deception, but in the Bible it says God will send them a strong delusion. God will send them a strong delusion. God will give them over to their own imaginations. That means they're going to start going down this road of knowledge, come up with all these ideas. They're going to believe those ideas are real, and that's going to be their belief. Please don't become one of those people. Let the foundation of your knowledge be rooted in Christ for real. These people are becoming bold. And there are more people adopting what they're saying than what the Lord is saying. That's the time we live in. Be careful of that. And and by the way, you guys are just admitting left and right that you know exactly who I'm talking about. Which means you've been listening to it too. That's, that's so funny. You can laugh on that one. Be careful. Be careful with that stuff. It Because if you're not careful, it will change your spirit. It will. You're at the, you're at the goal line. Right? You're at the goal line of a game. You're about to make a touchdown. So the opposition is going to mount the greatest defense they ever could to keep you from going over that line. This is where Satan fights very hard in very sneaky ways. Make sure that you're rooted in Christ for real. Please do that. And help each other stay that way. That's what we're here for, to encourage one another. Okay? I encourage you, you guys encourage me, we encourage other people to stay rooted in Christ. That's key. That's key. 
Now, I'm going to leave Channel Zero is going to stay on. You will. I don't know what time. I've got to do two things. I'll be back. I will be back. But if you hear me, it's going to be on Channel Zero. If you don't know where Channel Zero is, go to COT, go to the media player link, and then Channel Zero. All right? That's my, uh, that's going to be my uh, go-to channel. So if I start yapping, it's going to be on that channel. Okay? This is very awkward night. Tonight, it's a very awkward night, just like you know that. So I'll likely, chances are I'm going to come right back on again here in a few. God bless all of you. Listen, I'm going to see you next time here at COT. And expect, I'm going to put the schedule up for next week. The schedule we're going to go by next week as best we can. We have a few areas of study. We have to complete the summary on Revelation. And that's so everybody is up to speed in Revelation so far as we covered it. Right? Also, I need some interaction pages up so that we can go to a Tuesday. That means you guys can let me know some things. You can give me some instant feedback on some things. As far as what areas we need to go into, what areas of understanding that need to be expanded or some that need to be diminished, okay? So that this entire group can be up to speed. That requires all of you guys, right? Not just one or two people, but everybody. Also, also, we got to make sure that we're not leaving anybody behind as far as fellowship is concerned. I personally don't want anybody feeling like somehow they've been left out in the cold somewhere. We don't want that. We don't want that at all. So there's another page I'm working on, right, that uh, people can get some critical things to me as far as that is concerned. We have another chat room coming up. Another one, just for COT, and it's a very special chat room, right? I'll be using that chat room for just for special occasions but for special subjects. When those subjects are done or when, they, when, when our time is done, we don't use those chat rooms. But I'm going to go over some policies for those chat rooms. That's how they're going to work. I'm doing this to keep you guys, like if you're, if you're going to be a part of participation in that specific subject, it has to be interactive. I knew you guys have questions. And um, I will have images and things like that to share. So all that's going to happen in that specific chat room. That's why those chat rooms are going to be uh, there so that we can share some data and go over some things together, come to some conclusions, you know, things of that nature. So uh, sometimes nerdy, right? Then there's another chat room going up. I think it's important that we have, um, I, I think, three other chat rooms. I'm going to run this by the admins, all of them. Three other chat rooms for some outline reasons, but after we, after the admins and I go over this, we'll, we'll get everything narrowed down. So expect some more of that. Now, these chat rooms are not going to be open all the time, not all the time, uh, but when we are having those different functions, those chat rooms will be available, but you guys will certainly be able to know which ones. And each, each chat room will be, have a very special function it performs for that specific task. Okay. So, for example, if it's a Bible, Bible study, then we're going to have the King James version of the Bible with the Hebrew in there so that we can define, right, by the Hebrew and the Kano Greek. I'm sorry. The Kano Greek dictionary is almost done. So it'll be in there too. So you can see the original Greek language and what certain things actually meant, right? before everybody got a hold of it so that we can get down to the, you know, to the nail of things. And what that does is it, it doesn't show you anything new. That's not what it does, but it, it surely does bring out what the Lord has put in you. In every case, you're going to find out that the Lord put the truth in you from the beginning. That's what you'll find out. And that other people have tried to convince you of other ideologies, but God gave you the truth in the first place. That's what you'll see. That's what you'll find out. You really will. It is. I think it's amazing. I think it's good to share. And, um, and, you know, some more things as we continue to go forward, right? The KD Files will not have a chat room. Just just documents. You're free to, you know, talk about that. I would ask that you guys, when you first see the first postings of those KD Files, I would ask, don't publish them immediately to anywhere else. Okay, that's what I would ask. We'll do the first one as a trial. 
I need to see what echo they leave. So with those KD files, I need to see how, like after a week after the first ones are released, I'll be doing some special uh, analytical searches on the Internet to see impacts. Believe it or not, these things have impacts. They will impact, you know, things going forward, this, that, and the other. And I am not going to be part of uh, impacting some weird area that gains momentum, right? And the root of it leads back to one of those KD files. I do not want to do that. I don't want to be a part of that. If it can't edify the most high, a truth that all of us should know, there's no need for that. So I'll be looking, check, doing my thing. Anyway, guys, with that, I'm going to say God bless you. And and uh, some of these, who is it? Um, I have something for BP next week, not this week, next week. If and some of you know how to get to him, I know he's busy. But let him know that. I'm going to give him one and, and give uh, Pastor Paul one too next week. It's more like a heads up than anything else. But that help me remember that. Guys, do that for me, will you? I have a billion things going on. And I may not remember that, so, uh, yeah. Help me uh, remember that one. We'll give uh, Daily Excellence one also. Go to that. God bless you guys. I'm going to see you next time right here at COT. Remember, I'll be on Channel Zero if I come back. Right there on Channel Zero. No, not Mixler, not the other channels. I'm going to keep Mixler on for chatting purposes. I'll be back talking on Channel Zero, though. More likely. You guys on the East Coast, especially, right, those on the Northeast, Pay attention to your weather forecasts just in case. And there, there's probably some more developing storms taking place in other areas. So you guys be vigilant with that. Okay, please. God bless. Keep all of you. I'm going to see you next time right here at COT.